Hi everyone, my name is Matt and I'm a solutions engineer at Okta and today I'll be discussing options on how to protect your organisation against phishing attacks and costly breaches. So to set some context, today's world has no boundaries on how we work, where we work or what technology we use for work. In fact, the definition of workforce has also evolved beyond the boundaries of just your employees accessing company resources. It now includes frontline workers, contractors, business partners, and more. And this leads to the challenge of reducing risk by preventing, detecting, and remediating cyber attacks, all without introducing user friction and hindering workforce productivity. At Okta, we believe that identity-powered security is the foundation of zero trust. And identity not only needs to be secured at the time of authentication, but through the entire life cycle too. We want your workforce to safely access any technology in a boundaryless world. Today, I'll be talking about one very important component of that, which is phishing-resistant authenticators, and how they're helping organizations to de-risk the human element. Let's start by reminding ourselves why this topic is so important. The reality today is that hackers don't always hack into your systems. A lot of the time, they're simply logging in. It's no secret that phishing attacks are on the rise and are a widely used and successful set of tactics used by bad actors to steal credentials using a spoofed website. The login and password credentials can then be used by the attacker on a real website, either at a later point or in real time, to gain access to valuable data and systems. To maximize their chances of success, threat actors are using our natural human instincts to their advantage. advantage. They exploit our inclination to be helpful, make quick decisions under pressure, and overlook potential dangers when our emotions are stirred. Humans are quite often the weakest link, and that's why people are partially or fully responsible for almost three quarters of breaches today. And last year saw a peak in the overall number of successful phishing attacks. All of this leads to account takeover and data breaches, which is a huge cost to employees and business. This graph is taken from IBM's annual cost of a data breach report, which is a long-standing report that's now been running for over 18 years. What you can see in this slide is the overall cost of a data breach has been rising almost by 17% over the past five years. What we found to be particularly notable in that report is that the cost of a data breach varies depending on the initial attack vector. As you can see, breaches initially caused by phishing or stolen credentials accounted for a higher than average overall cost. In fact, the only initial attack vector measured in that report that resulted in a higher overall cost was Malicious Insider, that Sarah's just been discussing, which I think underscores the importance of properly managing not just how people access systems, but what they can access and do once they're in. Relevant to that are things like least privilege, segregation of duties, time-bound access, and privileged access management. What you can't see on this slide is that breaches that were initially caused by stolen credentials also took the longest to identify and contain, around 11 months versus nine months for other initial attack vectors, so two months longer for breaches initially caused by stolen credentials. Phishing attacks can be categorized as identity or endpoint attacks that typically result in credentials being harvested. Starting with identity attacks, this is where an attacker is trying to trick users to get hold of credentials. Common attacks leverage phishing emails, SMS messages designed to trick legitimate user into visiting phishing sites that look like a legitimate site. Readily available and easy to use phishing kits like Evil Jinx have made real time adversary in the middle attacks easier to execute than ever. Users are tricked into providing their real credentials, and fraudsters capture them while proxying the communication with the real servers. During the attack, the credentials as well as session cookies are captured, leading to account takeover. The good news is that you can protect against identity attacks, account takeovers, and loss of credentials through phishing-resistant authenticators and flexible access policies. And we'll get into the details of how to do that in a few minutes. In addition to identity attacks, businesses experience endpoint attacks. These are the attacks on the device and the network itself. The attackers exploit software vulnerabilities um, and develop kits that install malware or ransomware or hijack sessions and much more. 
Endpoint protection software can protect users uh, and devices against malware. And at Okta, we believe that those solutions can also act as a valuable input when making an access decision. If we know that the device is in poor health, we don't want to start a new SSO session on that device. For the remainder of this talk, we'll be focusing on preventing identity attacks. So that means phishing-resistant authenticators and policies. So phishing-resistant authenticators have three main properties. The first is that they don't use shared secrets. No passwords, no one-time passwords. An asymmetric key pair is generated, and the private key is stored in the hardware security module. So that can be a TPM, the secure enclave on the device, and so on. The most important thing is that it's on the device, and it doesn't leave the device. Secondly, they're origin bound. So the key pair is tied to a specific domain, registered against that key pair at the time of enrollment. So trying to use that key pair on any other domain at a later time will result in an error, which is very handy for us if the legitimate end user is tricked into visiting a malicious domain. Finally, they're trusted. Many authenticators include a cryptographic mechanism that enables us to prove that they are a genuine device from a trusted manufacturer. And that, in turn, allows you to enforce better control over which authenticators are permitted within your ecosystem. So hopefully you can start to see how these types of authenticators are very difficult to fish. And let's take a look at an example. So in this example, a threat actor has successfully delivered a malicious link to the target user, and they've clicked on it. The target user is directed to a malicious domain that looks and feels exactly like their normal login page, and that's because it's being proxied in real time. They attempt to log in using their phishing-resistant authenticator, and they see an error message. Something's gone wrong. The login attempt has failed, and the threat actor has been unable to intercept any credentials or session cookies. So the key point here is that the term phishing resistant really means that the web address of the website where you first set up the authenticator is tied to that authenticator. And that means that it won't issue your credentials to fake phishing websites. But Opta, we believe that there's even more that we can do. Because the example that we've just walked through raises some really important questions. How do we, as a security team, monitor for these unsuccessful sign-in attempts and prioritize them for investigation? It's great that we know the characteristics of phishing-resistant authenticators, but which ones in practice should I deploy and why? How do I ensure support across all of the devices in my organization? How can I get people to start using these authenticators? And many more. Our solution to that is called OctaFastPass. FastPass is Okta's solution to modern, passwordless, phishing-resistant authentication, and is implemented using the Okta Verify application available across all major platforms, Windows, Mac OS, Android, and iOS. As well as blocking phishing attempts, the Okta Verify app talks to the Okta backend via back-channel calls, which enables Okta to detect and take immediate action on this specific threat. That immediate action includes notifying the end user, notifying admins, and potentially tri triggering automated workflows to mitigate risk. This drives down the time to respond, enabling security teams to take action to protect other users who may not yet be using phishing-resistant authenticators. Now, there are many different types of authenticators to choose from in order to protect from real-time credential phishing identity attacks across different desktop and mobile platforms. Choosing the right authenticator depends on your deployment needs, but for the majority of deployments, OctaFastPass is a great fit, uh, both in terms of the user experience um, and in terms of the security with the device and location context. FastPass to one side for a, for a moment, biometric authenticators and security keys underpinned by FIDO2 and WebAuthn provide a more convenient verification experience for end users, as well as providing tighter security controls across the board. <clears throat> In other words, the historical trade-off between security and usability is a false choice when it comes to these authenticators, but there are still important implementation considerations. It's essential for admins to be able to specify which authenticators can be used to further reduce risk. For instance, admins can reduce the risk of account takeover by ensuring only valid and approved WebAuthn authenticators can be enrolled. 
Also important is the ability to enforce the use of hardware-protected web authentic authenticators in sign-on policies, which also helps to filter out pass keys and other lower security authenticators that are not hardware-protected. It's important also not to rely um, only on phishing-resistant authenticators to mitigate phishing attacks. Instead, we recommend deploying a defense in-depth principle to combine phishing-resistant authenticators with adaptive sign-on policies and evaluation of contextual device signal signals from MDMs, EDRs, location signals from IPs and geolocation, risk and behavior signals from machine learning, as well as unmanaged device assurance signals. Things like, is the unmanaged device up to date with the latest operating system? Does it have a PIN number um, enabled and so on? In addition to reducing the risk of stolen credentials and cookies, admins can erode their value through rigorous and well-designed authentication policies. Creating policies that require step-up with stronger authenticators and frequent re-authentication, limiting session duration and so on. Finally, using automated security workflows along with logging and auditing features can enhance remediation efforts based on security events. Events like MFA factor reset via the help desk. Depending on the context, you may want to automatically place the user into a temporary monitoring group for 24 hours, clear their sessions, or raise a SecOps ticket. Or, going back to the FastPass fish alert example from earlier, triggering a SecOps workflow to detect malicious domains and respond faster to protect users. So in conclusion, our main takeaways are, one, we recommend going passwordless by driving your organization's adoption of phishing-resistant authenticators. Set authentication policies and contextual policies. That means going beyond sole reliance on the user authenticating successfully, but considering signals from the device and the network and whether that login is usual for that user. And finally, enforce observability and monitoring. Deploy security orchestration through security workflows to enhance your remediation efforts and reduce your time to respond. At Okta, we're paving a path to protect users, organizations, and their resources. There's a lot more to discuss than what I've had time to cover today, so if you'd like to find out more, please visit us at the Okta booth. Thank you.